Hello, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another very exciting episode of CSK News. You might be wondering, Jake, you're on vacation. What are you doing? This is actually a pre-recorded episode of news. And of course, yesterday I released my video about my job in esports. And I firstly want to thank all of you guys who watched that video for the great comments, the response. I could not be more excited for the future. And yes, I'm currently on vacation right now, but I thought why not pre-record a video of some great topics to talk about for CSK News. And I'll see you guys Friday or Saturday with more news videos. And I hope you guys all enjoy. Let's hop into our first big story out there. Actually, in esports news all around FaZe Clan, who apparently is going to face some copyright infringement issues and might be going to court against FaZe Apparel. So I'm going to be saying a few different names throughout this and whenever I say FaZe, I'm going to actually be tending to go towards FaZe Clan and when I say FaZe Apparel, that's the company who is actually suing FaZe Clan for using their term on all their apparel recently. So this actually stems back to 2013-2014 where FaZe Apparel did copyright and patent the, phase, uh, the term FaZe on all their apparel and their clothing, and which means other companies out there could not do the exact same thing. Now apparently, FaZe Clan and FaZe Apparel have had meetings ever since then. They never reached an agreement as to, you know, you know, a, a sum of money that FaZe Clan could pay FaZe Apparel to actually use their term. And ever since then, FaZe had abided by the rules up out until 2016 where FaZe started using not just FaZe Clan on their apparel, but also the word FaZe, which was against those patented laws. Now on top of that, up until 2016 and forever actually, uh, FaZe Clan was told they must have the word Clan following FaZe on their apparel. And until 2016, they abided by those rules. But then recently, on all their apparel, we have seen things like FaZe alone, which does break those laws. So apparently FaZe Apparel is now going after FaZe Clan, and they do face uh, charges of, of millions and millions of dollars for doing so. And you can imagine this could be looking bad for FaZe Clan, although they will have a powerful legal team behind them. It does not look good, though. Uh, it does seem right now FaZe Apparel has a well-established patent coining that term FaZe. And again, obviously many of us know FaZe Clan much more than we know FaZe Apparel, but in this kind of legal uh, battle, it does come down to what patents, what copyrights have been struck down, which FaZe Apparel does have in 2013, 2014, the patent of that word FaZe. And on top of that, they actually were the first established company here, FaZe Apparel in 2007 and FaZe Clan following them in 2010. Now, when I first read that, I was like, I thought FaZe Clan must be a lot earlier. They didn't actually brand themselves. They didn't actually legally brand themselves as FaZe Clan until 2010. So yes, we have FaZe Apparel suing FaZe Clan. And will it go their way? It seems there probably will be a settlement reached before then, and it probably will be a large sum of money. Now, bouncing off that as well, though, we did have one of our newest FPL members this past week, and his name is actually Doc on screen for all of you. He was faced with one of the, some of the worst backlash I've ever seen in a long time, and this video has a lot of backlash and kind of some disappointing moments we've seen so far. I'm not going to show the comments uh, that were actually replied to this tweet by by Face It themselves, but a mix of backlash from from his personal looks, from his actual his his race itself. It was just really disappointing to see a new FPL member just kind of torn apart like that. And thanks to MoTV actually who given a factory new Dragon Lore, so that was that was really nice to see. But also so he was one up by one other person out there, the Don himself, Don Hossie, actually giving out factory new Dragon Lords left and right, but not to not to people like Doc. And again, congrats to Doc to being our new FPL member. He's also very young and has some great, obviously some great talent, some great potential in the future. We do have the Don Hossie though giving former Envious member Haji his factory new Dragon Lore, as well as the UK man god himself. I cannot believe I said that. Smooya, he also got a factory new Dragon Lore as well from the Don. And yes, apparently all these guys just giving out free Dragon Lores. But even more backlash, and again, as we close out today's news episode, it is a very short episode. I do apologize for that. When I'm back next week, of course, the first episode back is going to be very, very packed with everything I do miss. It's going to be a little bit of a recap episode, but also we had Oscar at Star Series for Mouse Sports with some, I guess you could say, poor performance, and he did receive, uh, apparently, according to him, he received death threats for doing so. So all in all, this week, I've just seen, it's been disappointing to see what the community has been reacting to. Again, uh, this kind of thing, I'm not really sure if it's spread on the forums like Reddit, if it makes it better or worse, which is kind of sad to see people out there and how toxic they can be and it, it kind of reminds me of last night I was checking through comments a lot of the comments are amazing but every once in a while you do read a comment about you know you know wh why am I watching these videos you know Jake you're an idiot so, so it, 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 it slowly demoralizes you it realizes and you make it makes you realize some people out there are just some terrible people so hopefully that will stop in the future and anyway as well we do have a team sprout expected as, as we talked about this last week we had inside source about team sprouts final roster first it was Sacrone they now finished off with Percy their full roster 
Hofstra on screen. Kind of unfortunate news out there, I think people are thinking, because now Team Sprout has actually become a team of former teammates. And they did actually have uh, Percy on there added as their newest fit member. He's actually played with NATO Sapix in the few in the past as well. A solid roster with Dennis and Spitty on there as well. But still, what can we expect from them when it comes to maybe trying to qual qualify for the major qualifier again? Probably not high hopes, but still a solidified, a solidified roster and they are now complete. And we'll see how Team Sprout does in the future. Now, very lastly, for today's episode of CSGO News, I do want to shortly talk about VGO skins. I did actually last week talk about them. Did they lie to us? Did they? Uh, we actually had a screenshot sent to us of this on screen, and apparently their operations were being delayed by Steam and Valve. Valve may be targeting them because VGO was a solution to gambling. As of right now, I do want to state my opinion on VGO. First of all, it's a very sketchy way to fix gambling. Now, they actually reached out to me via Twitter. They said, Jake, that tweet was faked. It was not by us. You guys can tell by the text and that screenshot. It did not match the, the text that usually your tweets go in, so or the font of the text. So that tweet, uh, that screenshot was actually faked, but still, nonetheless, VGO has been delayed probably by the same amount that tweet did say. It's going to be probably several months before we do see them in action. As many websites out there, it seems OP Skins has kind of backed off, uh, backed off the gas on that operation for now. I've also talked to many gambling sites out there who wanted to actually put that into place. It does seem heavily delayed. Can we expect VGO skins in the future? Yes, but there are st still a ton of legality around this. And again, people compare this to, oh, it's cryptocurrency, it's blockchain, it must be legal, it must be fine. The one main problem I have right now, after talking to some other uh, betting website owners and esports owners out there, I really, the one concern I have uh, for now is who is owning VGO? We still have no idea the main names behind VGO, and the main suspicion right now is, of course, there is maybe the head or the owner of a big gambling site out there, or many gambling sites out there, who is trying to start VGO themselves, which would, of course, be a bit odd, and we really need to know. I think that's kind of a public disclosure that really does need to happen. We have no idea who is running VGO, what their ultimate goals are, and again, it seems like a sketchy solution to gambling right now. Yes, it could fix the seven-day trade ban for gambling, but it wouldn't save CSGO at all. It wouldn't even save the CSGO trade ban. It would not do any of that, and and I, I highly doubt it would actually benefit CSGO at all. Will it come in the future? Most likely. But will it be beneficial for all of us? No, just probably the gamblers. So, hope you guys all enjoy. My name is Jake Like you. Thank you all for the great support as of late. I will see you all in a couple days. I do have a few pre-recorded videos on Wednesday and I think Friday for all of you to watch. But I'll be back Saturday with more news. And I, I just, I could be more excited. I'm going to go enjoy my vacation though. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. And I will see you back here on the channel sometime soon. And, uh, goodbye.